All right, well, good evening and welcome uh, to the beautiful Fort Lewis College campus. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening for our third and final Pre-Campus Academy live session. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, thanks for, thanks for joining us. If you've attended one of our previous two sessions, welcome back. Um, my name is Mark Mastalski. I'm the director of the Leadership Center and also get to work with the outstanding staff who helps put on and coordinate uh, new student and family orientation. And in fact, tonight I'm joined by four of those wonderful folks. Uh, you're gonna, we're gonna be able to spend the next hour taking your questions uh, and getting them answered by our senior team. These are uh, four wonderful students who have been working with us for quite some time and will be ready to go to, to welcome all of you to campus next week. So just a reminder, we are live uh, on YouTube and Facebook. And so this is an opportunity for you to uh, submit questions and we will be answering your questions uh, uh, in the moment. If there's a question that maybe we are not able to answer, uh, we will look that up for you and report back uh, on one of the, uh, the Facebook or, or YouTube, and we'll make sure that that, that answer gets taken care of. So um, again, thanks for joining us, and we're looking forward to a great hour uh, together. Uh, this has been put together to enhance the Pre-Campus Academy uh, resource, which hopefully you've been working on up until this point. Uh, remember, there are 10 modules that we really uh, expect that you complete before you arrive on campus next Thursday. Uh, because we feel that there's some terrific information that we want you to know about before you step on campus. Remember, the focus of orientation is about your success and tra transitioning to Fort Lewis College. So please make sure that you're taking care of the, the Pre-Campus Academy uh, modules. So um, before we go any further, what I'd like to do is allow our, our four awesome students here a chance to introduce themselves. So if you could let us know who you are and a little bit more about yourself. So Ashley, can you kick us off? All right, my name's Ashley Mukwe. I'm from Minnesota. Um, I play lacrosse here at the Fort. I'm a marketing major. I'm a junior, but I'm going to be graduating this year. And I love pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'll second that. Pizza's the pizza love. Not, not the Minnesota love? Well, that too. Okay. You know, Midwest, <laughs> Midwest. love overall. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Kaylee Carr. I am from Santa Fe, New Mexico and Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Um, I'm a junior. I'm a psych major. Um, why did I come to Fort Lewis? Is that well, we'll get to that. Okay. But just um, I guess my favorite food is rice. I'll go with that. So, yeah. Started a trend. Of yeah, course. there's a trend. All right. Love it. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Jolie. Um, I'm a junior slash senior here at the Fort. I'm graduating, or I'm going to be majoring in business administration and psychology, and I'm from Pinon, Arizona. Shout out to the Riz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jolie. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Skyler Venus. Um, I'm from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Truly, not a half, but <laughs> um, I am a biology major, and uh, I graduate this December, so it's pretty exciting. Um, and I guess I love basketball. So, yeah, excellent. Well, before we, we get into some of the, the Q&A time, I did want to point out tonight we're coming to you from the Native American Center on our campus. Uh, the NAC is one of our cultural centers, and so we really wanted to highlight ton that tonight, um, along with El Centro de Muchos Colores, which is actually just adjacent to us. They share a, a commercial kitchen, so food is very important uh, down here. And then also, uh, along with the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, which is located in Reed Library, those three areas are the cornerstones for our diversity collaborative. Um, so tonight we did want to feature one of uh, those centers. Uh, the NAC fosters the academic success and personal development for Native American students and all students uh, on our campus. 
Uh, each semester we welcome uh, about 1,200 uh, self-identified Native students and from more than 150 different tribes and nations. So it is really something that makes our campus unique uh, and rich uh, with diversity. Um, the NEC includes several wonderful staff um, who would be happy to welcome you. Uh, that includes Liz Bahi, who is our new director of the NEC and the Diversity Collaborative, um, Gabby Allen, Joey Dell, uh, Laura Owens, and Lisa Cates. So um, next door in El Centro, uh, you would be welcomed by Sharina Trujillo Long and many student staff that she hires uh, to work in El Centro. And Nancy Stauffer, who is our coordinator of diversity programming, uh, oversees the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, which is, of course, or which is located over in Reed Library. So please, when you get to campus, stop by any or all of these spaces. Um, I do want to point out the fact next Thursday, uh, if you look in the schedule for orientation, all three of these areas will be hosting welcomes and, and open houses, and that is on the bottom of page seven, and there's other places doing that as well, but if you're interested in, in the NAC or El Centro or Gender and Sexuality Resource Center, please take a look at the schedule and make sure you figure that into your time uh, after you've moved in and maybe done anything else that you may need to do on Thursday the 24th. So how about that? A lot of information mm -hmm. to kick us off uh. with, huh? All right. Um, so what I'd like to do now is, is kind of hear from the four of you. Um, you're all, all here with us because you have really, uh, you, you've come to Fort Lewis and loved your experience here and now you want to share that with our, our new incoming students and their families. So let's kind of go around and maybe Skyler we can start with you. Why, why did you choose Fort Lewis College to be your home away from home? Um, well I guess a big part of it was um, I guess kind of tradition but my, uh, my parents met here actually which is uh, really cool. That, that is. is. I forgot when they graduated. I probably should know when they graduated. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so they met here and then my sister, my older sister graduated two years ago. And so when deciding to go to college, um, it's like four hours away from Santa Fe. That was big into it, but um, a lot of a tradition. Oh, great. So yeah, some, some family legacy there. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Thanks. Thanks, guy. Jolie? to come to Fort Lewis just because I was living in Flagstaff going to high school for a while and I wanted to change but I loved the mountains I loved the hiking and I wanted a place that still felt like home and I came out visited Durango dur or during my I think it was my sophomore year of high school I love the campus I love the people and so I just decided like this is where I want to come yeah so a little little bit of the distance but still reminiscent still really of, like of home. home and stuff yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's important Okay. Um, so I'm from Pagosa Springs, so it's only an hour away, so it's close to home, which is nice. Um, but actually, my sophomore year of high school, my sister was a freshman here, and I remember moving her into West Hall and just looking over the rim, and I absolutely fell in love with the campus and the whole entire atmosphere that was here, and I was like applying for other schools, but like once I knew I got in Fort Lewis, I was like, I'm definitely going to go to Fort Lewis. <laughs> like, I love this town, I love the campus, like, I love the people here, so... It was just a definite, once my sister came here and we moved her in, I was like, mm, I'm going to be here too. So yeah. that's just why I'm here and I've been here ever since. And I know, Kaylee, you mentioned you kind of grew up in both Santa Fe and Pagosa. Mm -hmm. Tell people, I mean, I know, where, where's Pagosa Springs? So Pagosa Springs, it's an hour, uh, I don't know. Direction. East, north, east, north, east, west, yeah. south. I don't east. know. <laughs> I should probably know that, but um, it's an hour away. Um, it actually is home to the world's largest uh, hot springs and deepest hot springs in the world, and it's called Pagosa Springs for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and very small town, around like 9,000 people. It doubles in the summer for vacation homes, but it's a really small town, so actually coming here was a lot bigger for me, and I'm like, oh, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> so. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the, the hot springs there because a lot of people are often looking for something maybe to do. Check it and 
the hot springs does consider Durango as local. Yes, yeah, so you can take your so student discount yes. there and it's within 60 miles. So you do get the local discount, which yes. not a lot of them know. Which yeah, is really cool. and it's a beautiful yeah. place that's built on the San Juan River. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's not like jumping into a, a commercial no, you swimming can do the, pool. You can do the plunge where you jump in the freezing cold winter in the summer and go in the lobster pot. The lobster pot. <laughs> yeah, I don't wouldn't recommend it. You <laughs> might, it's terrible, but <laughs> people do it. They say it's therapeutic, but I don't know. <laughs> I did the ice plunge in Minnesota, oh so God. I feel like it'd be a piece of cake here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Ashley? All right. So I'm from Minnesota, so I came quite a distance. It's actually about 1,500 miles from my home. Um, I came here for lacrosse. Uh, uh, that's how I originally got out here and started looking at the campus. I toured a lot of campuses, and I, like, fell in love with Fort Lewis as soon as I came to it. Even though it was a really rainy day, I was like, all right, it's got to be better. If I love it now, I have to love it when it's sunny. <laughs> and so I came here for the lacrosse, saw the school, loved the school. Then I came and uh, saw the programs that I offered, like Outdoor Pursuits, because I am from Minnesota, so I have lakes, no mountains. And I wanted to experience the mountains, and I definitely have been able to do that here. Um, with outdoor pursuits and without, I go on weekend trips and all that. Yeah. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, good. Um, looks like we yeah. have our, our question from the audience. We have Ellie on Facebook who asks two different questions. We'll start with just the first one. How is the food on campus in the dining hall? Well, I know that we did get a new chef recently, Chef mm -hmm. Leith, and yep. she has been working really hard to create a new menu and a very healthy menu. I know we do meatless Mondays uh, to be eco-friendly to our campus, um, but so far I have experienced pretty good reviews about the food and all that. They definitely have stepped it up and made sure that there's a lot of healthy options and options for people who gluten-free, dairy-free, and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else want to touch on the? We get ice Dino? cream. <laughs> <laughs> Just get saying. ice cream. <laughs> ice cream yes. most nights. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> They were it's, uh, oh, it's, yeah. oh, it's, uh, it's all you can eat, so. <laughs> yes. That was big for me as a freshman. <laughs> well, I, I, I will touch on that because that's actually a recent recent change to, our, to the, the dining hall. Um, new this fall, it, every meal is all you care to eat. Um, so before this previously, lunch was a la carte. So breakfast and dinner was all you care to eat and lunch uh, was pay as as you choose um, your selections, but that is completely changed now. And every meal is going to the all you care to eat. So have all you care to eat. Um, yeah. So there you go, Julie. Did you have something you want to add? Nice. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that they are really accommodating. Like if you have any allergies and stuff like that, like the staff will work with you to get you something that you can eat and you can enjoy. So yeah, dining hall is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Another thing I'll just add on to that is that we are uh, one of the members of the Real Food Challenge. And actually, um, Allie and, and, or was it Allie or Ellie? Sorry. Ellie. Ellie um, and others listening, the dinner on Thursday will actually feature our Real Food uh, Challenge menu. And so these are items that are selected because they're organic or local or fair trade. And that is something that we did uh, a couple of years ago. And as a campus, we're, we're pretty pleased uh, that we're a part of that program. It's a nation nationwide program. So There's also a couple places around campus you can get food. And Jasmine's in Burton Hall has the best paninis. Just to have, like, best paninis on campus. <laughs> and then we do have the Rocket. It's mm -hmm. new, or new last year. They just changed it. And that has, like, um, uh, milkshakes and fries and stuff like that and sandwiches and salads and stuff like that. So if you're an athlete and you don't get to make it to dinner or something like that, you're able to use your dining dollars to go to the Rocket. Or you can just use your dining dollars if you don't want to anything in the dining hall right which is really cool and the the rocket is really our our dining venue that's kind of open late night yeah exactly. the dining hall itself is is really open for the three main meal times mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking for a snack or a place to hang out with friends and and grab that milkshake or a burger fries whatever um, the rocket a is open um, and B 
Honestly, the views from the rocket, sunset, best place on campus. Best like place unbelievable sure. views mm -hmm. up there. So good place to hang out. Okay, another follow up. Uh, Ellie, the second question she had was, uh, how, how are the dorms? So can you describe the residence halls, uh, maybe from your experience from living in them, things like that? What were the, what are the features? What did you like about them? Things like that. Yeah, let's hear about the residence halls. Okay, I'm, I was a Cooper in Cooper Hall, so I'm a Cooper alumni, and I love that hall. I will always, I will always represent Cooper Hall because it was, I just had a great experience. Um, I was like a community in that hall all the time. Like, we had an open door uh, kind of game going on, so if you had your door open, you could, like, people were able to come in and say hi, check out your dorm room, and you get stickers, and it was kind of a competition and all that, but it also, like, created a sense of community, and I had really good feedback with, like, uh, my RAs and my RDs, like I always got along with them. They had great like events going on all the time, tie-dye or like game night or stuff like that, which was cool. Um, Cooper Hall is one of the, it's like, it's not the traditional because the traditional is the, bath the bathrooms are on the, mm -hmm. like down the hall. Often. Yeah. Right. Um, so you have your bathroom and it's like a Jack and Jill bathroom. So you have your dorm, the other dorm, the bathroom is in between the shower and the well, I'm actually in the Cooper Hall video, so if you want to <laughs> check it out, there's my dorm room for freshman year. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I loved Cooper Hall. I have actually like all the halls. I've been in all, I didn't, haven't lived in all of them, but I've been in all of them. Each one definitely is awesome mm -hmm. in their own way. Yeah, great. Any other things to add? I, I was in Crofton, which is not the sweet style. Mm -hmm. So it was the communal bathrooms. And I've been to other campuses, I've seen other residence halls and the rooms you live in and they're very dated and these are relatively new I'd say and you don't spend that much time in them as much as I'd love to say I hung out in my room all the time I didn't like Fort Lewis you're outside all the time mm -hmm. because our campus is beautiful and it's just not worth it to be inside so that's that's what I did yeah yeah anything else to add Julia or Skyler? I lived down in Escalante and just like Ashley said everybody's outside all the time so it was really cool because when I wanted to like just crack down on studying and get some work done the halls were really quiet like everybody was always out doing something different so it was like always a good place to get down and focus on some schoolwork. Yeah yeah great um, and of course every residence hall has its own kind of character and feeling and that will develop as you live in in the, the hall and and make friends and um, every every hall has its own kind of unique flavor and and certainly uh, we've done some renovations to the Bader Snyder complex uh, animus uh, which opened up in 2010 um, so we have a wide uh, array of choices, and that's something that you'll, again, you'll just come to uh, hopefully appreciate it and maybe decide, you know, for your sophomore year, hey, I still want to live on campus, and, but I'd like to live in the same hall or a different hall or even the same room. <laughs> uh, so you get to help make those choices. Looks like we have uh, another question. Yes, we got a question from Debbie on Facebook. Are the showers in Cooper Hall a bathroom shower combo or shower only? They are shower only. So it's a stand up shower only. It's the uh, toilet stall right here, and the shower will be right next to it. All right. Excellent. Thanks for those questions. And again, feel free uh, to chime mm -hmm. in and, and ask us anything that you'd like. So let's now switch gears. You, you all are part of uh, the senior team for orientation. So let's talk a little bit about orientation. So um, what would you say to somebody that's, that's thinking, I'm going to be there in one week, right? We got the okay. one week countdown. What what should I expect? What what should I be anticipating? What what would you say to them about what to to be looking forward to? Prepare to be amazed. <laughs> like prepare to uh, like expand your horizons. Like you're not going to be the same person you were when you came here the first year. You're definitely going to change in good and bad ways and learn from a bunch of experiences, but. Um, as far as like coming to school, like orientation and all that, come to orientation. It helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Like just saying it helps. 
um, definitely helps help you find your group of friends or at least friends until you do find your group of friends and stuff like that or people to at least hang out with or if you see them around like I have people from my freshman orientation one of them is my neighbor right now and I'm always like hey hi how are you doing <laughs> like we had orientation together so yeah you definitely make friends and it's a small campus so you get to see them around you get to say hi like sometimes you keep up with them sometimes you don't but mm -hmm. it's definitely a really really good way to feel more at home once you get here absolutely absolutely yeah adding on to that it's just um definitely go to orientation because I still talk to people that I met my orientation like three and a half years ago three four three three a while ago <laughs> um yeah it's a thing I would say is just challenge yourself to just get out of your comfort zone a little bit and maybe you know if you're shy you know go talk to someone just a random person because everyone's gonna be in the same boat as you are um, you know, people come from all across the nation. Um, there's a few from like, you know, you know out, of the, out of the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's going to be a lot of people here, different, like really diverse. So just, yeah, get out of your comfort zone and you won't regret it. Definitely go to orientation just because like that's how I learned about like where all my classes are. That's actually how I got a job too at the leadership center here at the fort. Like it was really cool. Like I walked high five. In, <laughs> high five. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in and um, one of the previous employees, um, Ashley, she was working there, and I like was like I need a job, and she just like gave me the application. It was like here you go. I'll see you in the fall, and I was like yes. <laughs> so yeah, orientation is super important. Mm, definitely. Looks like we have a question. Uh, we had a general comment from James who reminded uh, that new students make sure to check out the theater department plays. Students get a free ticket for every production. So that leads me to another question of what other kind of freebies or discounts or inside information you can give to these students to help maybe help them save some money or things that they're already paying for maybe with their student fees that they can take advantage of. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I was just, I'm glad you said that, Patrick. First of all, James, thanks for the comment. And I do want to reiterate um, the access to the, the plays through the theater are not free. You're actually paying for them as part of your student fees. Um, so again, the different resources that are on campus, like the access to the, the theater productions, uh, riding the Durango T bus system, again, these are things that are already built into your student fees. So use them and use them wisely. So, but less, yes, thanks, let's talk about that. You get into the sports games for free as well, regular season games. But last year, the basketball team went past the RMAC and we hosted it, and uh, the athletic department gave away 200 free tickets, so that's pretty awesome. Also, if you check out the Snapchat and Twitter, there's a lot of things about what's going on that week, and SUP does a lot of free things. Like, we post things about, uh, there's a stuffed animal making thing, they do s'mores sometimes, and most times when they have an event, there's free food. And, and just that's pretty important. And just so people may not know what yeah, SUP okay. is, oh. so could you explain what that is? SUP, SUP is Student Union Productions. They put on a lot of fun stuff at our school. I'm just getting involved with it this upcoming year, but it's always something fun that I, I always relate with the people about it. I'm like, hey, like, I know you did this, so. Yeah. Um, another thing is Grubhub. Um, that's on Thursdays. There's free hot meals every Thursday at Grubhub. So like, if you're like, oh, I really am in the mood for a hot meal or something like that, they will have food for you. And also, they have a pantry that you can go to if you need some food too, which is another free resource that we have on campus, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, thanks for that, Kaylee. So that, that's located in the basement of Reed Library uh, every Thursday. Yep. And there's no, like, questions asked. Nope, you just nothing. walk in. And walk in, get some yep. food, and you're good. Yep, absolutely. Good. Thanks for that. I really liked the Durango Transit System just because I got, like, you get your free sticker from the SkyCard office, so, like, make sure to stop by and get that. And um, it's great. Like, I learned most of Durango just by riding the bus system, and it really helped me just, like, feel more comfortable going out and going to see new places that, like, I was really interested in seeing. And uh, the post office gives you a free um, P.O. box, so definitely go check that out. Get your mail, get all your stuff. <laughs> um, I would say go check out the, I'm not sure if it's paid by student fees, but SLC. Is that paid by yeah, student fees? Student Life Center. Yeah, student um, is that paid? So, Yes, so the access to it, the use of the Student Life Center is built into student fees, mm -hmm. um, but being coming a member of Outdoor Pursuits, 
requires an additional membership. Right, right. Um, yeah, the Student Life Center is a great place, really cool place. There's um, a basketball court and a gym above it, a track that goes around if you're not familiar with it. Um, and then there's also racquetball courts, which I just found out like last year, <laughs> so it's super cool. You should definitely go check it out. <laughs> All right, we have another question. Uh, we've actually had two questions around a similar topic, one from Vincent and one from Natalie on Facebook, around the different student clubs. So is there anything that the students, new students coming in should be on the lookout for? Are there certain uh, student clubs that you'd recommend or student organizations that you would recommend? Marketing club. <laughs> Psych club. <laughs> club, club, club. Um, I'm trying to think. I know student org organizations. There's TRIO, which is in the top floor of the um, library. And that is for uh, first generation college students and um, you know college students that are in need. Uh, you get a success coach, pretty much a person to make sure that you're on track for your goals and for your classes and stuff like that. They have a whole area where you can just go up there and do your homework, you can hang out, you can make meetings. If you are going through tough times and you just need someone to talk to, they're there to talk to you. They're just there for your like success during school. I would highly recommend people checking it out, seeing mm -hmm. if you can sign up, because I don't know where I'd be without those people. Yeah. Perfect. Great another, people and great service. Yes. That's another free thing. You can go yeah. to the um, counseling center. Yes. You get five free, was your freshman? Mm -hmm. yeah. You get five free sessions there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Counseling center. That. What about else about student organizations and being involved? Uh, definitely like outdoor pursuits was one that I really liked like yeah you did have to pay the entry fee but you got so much more out of it just because like you got to attend like all the trips like it was great like it was just a great way to get out go hiking and like meet a bunch of people at the same time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, another a club that I joined last semester was social dance club mm -hmm. which it, I don't know I love to ballroom dance <laughs> and I think it's important in our society <laughs> and um, so if you want to d learn how to dance um, they always have a they always have uh, the screen is always showing social dance and there's always announcements about it um, you can also um, contact me I don't know how to like, con but yeah contact me just gotta <laughs> <laughs> or, um, and um, yeah social dance it's fine yeah, now just adding on to that, so uh, the Leadership Center is the hub for student organizations on campus. Uh, and we have, every year we have about 70 to 80 different student organizations. Uh, and we provide all you know, support and oversight. Um, many of, some of the organizations have been around for decades. And every year we have students who come in and say, hey, I, I love Quidditch. Can I start a Quidditch club? And the answer is yes, of course. <laughs> you may start a Quidditch club. And um, student government actually will give you up to $100 to start that organization. So we have organizations, everything that's social, like Social Dance Club. Um, we have cultural uh, focused organizations, faith based organizations. Um, you heard about some like psychology club and marketing club. These are academic focused. So it runs, it runs the gamut. And if you have any interest or questions, just come to the Leadership Center uh, located in the Student Union right across from the info desk and we'll be happy to help you out. Free Popcorn Fridays. <laughs> yeah. Popcorn yeah. Fridays. <laughs> also, I think the, another one that people should get involved in is intramural sports. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely oh, sign gosh. up, like pay that, I think it's like $10 fee or for something like, like for that. For the whole year. For the whole entire year. year. And you can sign on to anyone's team. Like you don't even have to know the person. They probably just <laughs> need a player and you just sign on and you'll show up and you're like, hey, I'm your player. They'll be like, cool. Like there's so many different sports, ultimate frisbee, basketball, volleyball, indoor soccer. There's so many different types, so I'd highly suggest people sign up for intramural sports and get involved. Cause Better be careful, I'm gonna sign up on your dodgeball team. Oh, uh, no, I play <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee, so. Oh, okay, Ultimate. Sorry. <laughs> you, can, you can tell the thing you don't want people joining your team. <laughs> just so you, if you're really competitive, just, you can do that. Another great thing to keep in mind is that um, during Welcome Week, which is the first week of classes, that Thursday, so that will be uh, August 31st, we will be hosting the Student Involvement Expo, and that will take place uh, over the noon hour, a couple of hours, like from noon to two, I believe. 
uh, out on the Student Union Plaza. And during that time, there will be a large number of student organizations out there promoting themselves, advertising how to get involved. So another great way to get to, to know some of the different student groups on campus. We have another question. Uh, question around Student Senate. So we're talking about Student Senate. Sounds like somebody here, Vincent, might be interested in Student Senate. So Mark, can you tell us a little about Student Senate, how that works and what they do and maybe how to get involved? Sure, absolutely. So uh, student government, uh, which here is known as ASFLC, the Associated Students of Fort Lewis College. Um, number one, every student should know about ASFLC because they are the official student representatives to the campus. So our student body go uh, government, our president, actually sits on um, the college president's budget committee, cabinet. Um, uh, this year, the, the president sits on the board of trustees. Uh, it will be on search committees. I mean, students have a direct line to the highest levels of administration. Uh, student government is made up of the following uh, members. We have the E-team, which is the president, the vice president, and then uh, a student center, senator who uh, acts as the speaker of the Senate. There are then 50, or excuse me, 11 uh, elected senators, uh, and then a couple of parliamentarians who make sure uh, they provide the oversight that ASFLC is running according to their constitution and bylaws. They have an administrative assistant uh, who actually is hired every fall. So if you're interested in, in a paid position with student government, um, that position is paid. And then there is the financial allocation board director, um, or we, we, for short, we say the fab director, uh, who oversees the disbursement of funding uh, to all the different student organizations on campus. Uh, so they, they have a, a pretty significant role uh, in that student involvement process. Looks like we have another question. Uh, we got a question, simple one, uh, Frisbee disc golf. Do we have a Frisbee disc golf? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk do. about that a little bit? We do. I don't know where it goes. I have not played it yet. <laughs> I know it goes uh, back behind uh, Bader Snyder back in there. And it actually is over by the concert hall too and um, Mears. And we do have one. I've never played at it. I, it's on my bucket list for this year, so. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody played at, at the disc golf course? Unfortunately, no. no. Okay. Well, I, I can tell you a bit about it. So yes, we do have one. It is relatively new. I think we uh, installed it about four years ago. Uh, and actually, there's a really, I think, amazing story behind it. It is the type, it, it, it exists because students came to student government and said, hey, we would like to have a disc golf course on campus. Uh, and they were able to then present to administration about where they'd like it located. Uh, and it was a really terrific meshing of people coming together uh, and uh, locating it and installing it, and it's it is super popular on campus. So so yes, we do have a, a disc golf course right behind uh, the Bader Snyder and Centennial Complex on the east side of campus. Another question. Uh, Shane on YouTube would like to know uh, where to go for the outdoor equipment rental and uh, how much does it cost per semester? So outdoor pursuits. Yeah, so um, I believe mm -hmm. it's $50 per, sem per semester, 60. 60 and it's, okay, yeah. So it's about $60 and they have like everything that you can think of. It's snowboards, skis, uh, you can take day packs, um, like really like big overpacks for if you're going to be staying the night while hiking, uh, ice football climbing. gear, running gear. Uh, what ice you? climbing. Ice climbing, yeah, they got it all. So I mean like definitely pay that fee, it's so worth it. Like I don't know how many times I've used all the gear that they have at OP, just remember to clean it out, take it back in good condition, just so that it's like good for the next few years. And return it on time. Yeah. Because they, they will fine you if it's late, <laughs> and they, they, they will, but it is, yes, it's a great resource. 
Uh, OP is located in the Student Life Center. Yeah. Um, so the same building where you would go to access the basketball courts and racquetball and, and uh, group fitness classes, that's where OP uh, is located. So stop by and, and, and check them out. They also have a bike place and you can wax your skis and snowboards there, which is mm -hmm. really, really nice. Yes. They have all the equipment you need. It's like professional stuff. Yep, knowledgeable people, um, and they train students to do a lot of that work. So when you walk into the bike shop, the person that's there to greet you and, and show you how to do your bike maintenance is a fellow student. So that's a really neat, uh, neat resource. Another question. Uh, this question from Natalie. What do I do if I don't want to do, or what do I do if I don't know what I want to do with the major once I graduate? I don't want to pick a major that I'm going to hate and waste all that money on. So maybe talk maybe some resources, some different exploration, maybe some things that you did to find out what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Live, love, career services. They, they help you with everything. Formatting resumes, interview skills, anything they want. And if you just want to talk to them and be like, I have no idea what I want to do, they'll sit down and have a nice conversation with you about anything. But My biggest thing is I'm kind of in the same boat. I love my major and minor. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with it. But my the thing that keeps me going is all my teachers, I sit down and talk to my teachers within that major, and they have pointed me in fields. I have branched out, and I've gone to like mental hospitals and stuff like that and talked to them about inter like internships. Like I may not even want to do that, but... It's just branching yourself out from like what you really are like to do and what you're passionate about and just kind of figuring, figuring it out like along the way. Nobody knows exactly what they want to do with their life and it's normal to change your major a couple of times actually. Um, so don't feel like you're stuck and don't feel like you have to pick a major this year. I didn't pick my major until my sophomore year. Um, I tried out a bunch of different classes and figured out what I liked and what I didn't like and like found out some that I'd be like, oh, this would be a good minor, or this would be a good major or something. So don't feel like that you're stuck in these four years and you have to get it done right then and there. Like, you can branch out. You can take the time that you need. Like, it's not like high school finish in four years. It is, this is college. This is your time. This is for you. And this is your career and future. Like, mm -hmm. that's my advice, pretty much. Yeah. Any other suggestions, thoughts on that? No, I think Kaylee got it. <laughs> Kaylee. Actually, well, kind of like going off of what Kaylee said, um, it's what makes Fort Lewis so great. It's like a liberal arts school, so you have a range of everything. Like your core curriculum is you have to take a lab, you have to take, you know, depending on how far you are um, with math. So you're taking all these classes. So like going on with Kaylee, say so don't rush into it. Um, like take your first semester to kind of like, you know, send some feelers out. Um, I joined like a pre-med club my first semester and I didn't really work out, but I mean, just um, like get out of your comfort zone and then you can start thinking like what really interests you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll just uh, echo what Ashley said about career services. Make sure you visit and get to know career services early. Don't wait until your <laughs> senior year. Yeah. That doesn't help. Yeah. Get to know them early so they get to know you what you're interested in. They know employers. They can help with grad schools. Um, and it goes beyond just the staff in career services. Talk to your faculty members. Find out why did you choose to go into this area? And what is, you know, what is it that interested you? Who are your mentors? Uh, and then not just faculty, but staff. You know, there's a ton of staff on this campus who aren't necessarily in the classrooms, but still supporting and here for the commitment to your success. So. And yeah. the student's career fair will be at orientation. So definitely check it out. Yes, so career like, services will be mm -hmm. at the services fair on mm -hmm. Friday uh, over the noon hour. And I will also, for, I'll plug it for them. We, they will be hosting uh, the career fair, the job fair in the fall. I don't have the specific date. Um, but it's usually in October. Mm -hmm. We will have a number of employers on campus. So plan to go to that job fair. Start to meet those employers and, and uh, maybe you'll land that job for next summer even. Mm -hmm. So another question. I've got another question from Vincent. So thanks, Vincent, for the wonderful questions. You've had several. Um, are there any large events that are student implemented on campus? What should I look out for? 
Yeah, so large student kind of initiated events on campus. Sky Fest? Yes, Sky Fest. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Tell Homecoming. us about that. What's Sky Fest? Kaylee? <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I guess Sky Fest is a really big festival that we hold, I would say, in the end of September, mm -hmm. beginning of October, around then. Um, we have a lot of, they'll either be local artists or artists from around, you know, the states and all that. And they come in and it's this huge free, no, it's $1 ticket, sorry, not free. It's like $1 ticket or they are free, I can't remember. Um, but it's a concert and um, everyone gets to go to it. It's pretty awesome. I've been to, I think, one, mm -hmm. one of them. But, yeah, it definitely was worth it and I don't know. Yeah. Much about I don't know much about it. I wish I knew more about it, but yeah. All right. So I'll just say so yes, yeah, Skyfest is a large uh student it's by Student Union Productions. We already heard their name earlier. Uh and they plan this every year. It is basically a, a music festival. Mm -hmm. Uh and this year it is going to feature Travis Porter, uh who is a, a well known hip hop performer. Um, so you can watch for that. It will be held, I can't remember the specific date, it's in September, um, and you'll be able to get tickets uh, from, in fact, if you come to the Leadership Center, we'll make sure that you get know about the dates and where you can get tickets and when you can start to get them. Uh, but it is held, uh, it'll be towards the end of uh, September and it will be, be a great event. So that's Skyfest. Mm -hmm. What else, what are other? big student initiated events? Uh, there's the annual Real Film Festival that's done by the Environmental Center and that's mm -hmm. always really cool. It, like, You get to see a lot of different videos and information about all the environmental movements that are going on like in Durango, around the country and it's <coughs> really fun and I recommend going to it definitely. There's also, um, it just left me. Uh, it's all right, it'll come oh, back. Oh yeah, there's also the Pow Wow. Mm -hmm. Hosted by the NAC, it's a really cool event. Like, there's a lot of just like cultural richness and going to a lot of these events on campus. And following the power, there's the Real Histories of America, which is also going to be coming up, I believe, in either late September, early October. And the NAC and El Centro get to coordinate together on that and like just really put a lot of um, information out there for students who want to know more, I guess, about indigenous peoples around this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other? Um, awesome. There's also the Haunted House, which Ooh. we do around, well, on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> around <laughs> Halloween. So we do ours on Arbor Day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And it's, it's really cool. You can, if you want to be part of it, um, you can go ask the Leadership Center, and they'll, um, they'll find a spot for you. I remember I ballroom danced social dance club. Um, <laughs> I social danced in a couple, like last two years ago two Halloween's ago, so it's really cool. Um, the first um, trip through the haunted house is free, and then after that, I think it's like five dollars. Yeah, five dollars is five dollars, so it's definitely worth it to check it out. Yeah, it's a fun event. It's um, housing really does, the housing staff, mm -hmm. student housing staff, comes together and puts on it. It's, it's a huge event for them. And I think the Skyler said they're always looking for students who want to come in and play a role yeah, in the haunted house. So if you've ever wanted to scare anybody, <laughs> what a great opportunity. Yeah, especially if you have someone that knows you that just <laughs> chases you out of the house, the whole entire thing. Yep. Um, I think the only other thing that I was going to add is that a student union production also, I don't know it's like if it's a student thing that puts it on, but they have free movie nights every Wednesday night. And they're always really good movies too, like... They played Moana, they play like Monsters University, stuff like that. Like they play up to date movies mm -hmm. and then they also do some old time movies and then I know they did some local movies. I remember we seeing a ski movie that was going on. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And so yeah, they do a lot of different stuff going on, but it's every Wednesday night. Check it out for yep. sure. Yep, every Wednesday night in the Viacito room. Mm -hmm. So I'll plug athletics again mm -hmm. just because uh, our men's basketball team was top thirty for uh, uh, crowds which is pretty impressive considering how small our school is those get really rowdy and women's basketball was top five for attendees and women's lacrosse is in the spring and we want to get people at our games yep. yes 
So lots of different athletic yep. uh, events, and not just the NCAA athletics, no. like those those sports teams, but club sports, like our, our yeah, hockey we, team plays down oh, at, the um, so plays, they're actually off campus where they play, but it's very close and you can ride a bike or, or walk down there. So lots of different events uh, going on in that regard. So mm -hmm. follow-up question. Got a question about Durango. So what's town life like? So maybe think about the things that you like to do or interactions yeah. downtown. Things like Favorite that. hangout mm -hmm. spots. What t let's talk about Durango. Off the big events thing, Snowdown. Yes. Snowdown is one of the best times to be in Durango. It's a week long. Is that right? It's like Halloween week long. Two. Yeah, it's Halloween times two. Yeah, it's Halloween again. <laughs> All it, over again. Not it's great. during Halloween. Not during Halloween. <laughs> no. no. It is, yes. it's, a, it's the springtime version of Halloween. And everywhere, every place in town kind of comes together and does really fun events, fun activities, uh, things you can win prizes at. Um, it's themed it's every year. It's themed. It's black tie affair this year. Yep. So you get all snazzied up. Wear your prom dresses. Wear your prom dress. Yeah. Put them to good use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's literally the best weeks in Durango. And that's always held like the start of February. Mm -hmm. um, so keep an eye out for snow down. Very, very popular festival here. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. What else in Durango? Taste of Durango. Yes. Taste, Taste of, of Durango is awesome. <laughs> So like all the restaurants on Main like get together and they just line up like stands and like there's so much food. <laughs> so much food. And all the proceeds go to a oh, local charity. Gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of the businesses getting paid, I think they take maybe a portion, but most of the proceeds go to the soup kitchen. Yeah. If, if that's correct. Yeah. Um, another thing is we also, purgatory, mm -hmm. a lot of people might have questions about that. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they do a student discount. Do they still? They do. They still do. OK. They do. I didn't know if they changed it or not. Um, but yeah, so they do have a student discount. Definitely go over there. It's worth it. The mountain is huge. It's beautiful. Great place to snow or ski. Um, I know that they also, you can rent some skis and stuff from OP. Or if you want to even try snowshoeing, check yes. it out. Like, There's all different things that you can do in Durango. And I'd have to say that is probably one of the best things is having the ski area close mm -hmm. by, mm -hmm. for sure. And I would just say that most people would consider our three kind of local places to be Purgatory, Telluride, and Wolf, Wolf Creek. Creek. Um, Telluride and all of them obviously mm -hmm. offer season passes. And I'm fairly certain that you will be able to get Telluride and Purgatory tickets at OP. So if you stop by the OP office, they will be able, um, I believe, to be to offer you season passes of those mountains. Anything else about Durango? Um, Favorite hangout spots? Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd probably say Animus River is huge. If you um, have never been to Durango, you have to check it out. Um, tube it, you need to tube it. There's tubes at OP, right? I don't know. I, that's a great, there's kayaks. There are kayaks. kayaks. There are kayaks there, I know I that much. I don't know about tubes. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not I sure about that. Okay. Everywhere in Durango sells tubes because it's such a popular <laughs> Yeah, it's a popular yeah, thing. You can get your hand on some tubes. <laughs> they and, do have um, paddle boards, though. I know oh, that. Yeah. OP has stand up paddle boards, but I don't know about tubes. But sorry. I'll, I'll no, you, you can paddle board <laughs> down the river. That would be real fun. That would be super fun. That sounds so dangerous. <laughs> no, it works really well. It's, it's not <laughs> as hard as it sounds. <laughs> you just got to go to the milder part. Yeah, it depends it's where you are on the river. It depends on your level. Oh my God, go lake. with someone who knows. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wear a helmet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> there's also hikes all over town too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like oh. every direction there's a different hike. So mm -hmm. the rim is a hike itself. Like yeah. you could hike that and just there's so many places to explore down there too, just walking it. The they have the mountain bike trail because the mountain bikers do bike up and down that, so be careful mountain mountain bikers. But yeah, that's also a really cool place is and we also got the I don't know the name of the steps. What is the name the of the sky steps. steps? The sky steps. Sky stairs. Sky no, stairs. Sky steps. Sky steps. Yes. Okay, the sky steps <laughs> just got put in this summer, and it goes from uh, Fort Lewis all the way down to downtown, and so that's another really cool thing. So um, check it out, guys. First, when you're first here and you want to go on an adventure, you want to work out. Yeah, it's a good workout. <laughs> Get those so quads we just did it today, and there's over 500 steps that, that uh, right. are part of the Sky Steps. So. 523, actually. I oh. Remember counting for myself. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Skylar. <laughs> all right, another question. Thanks for all your questions, folks. 
Uh, we got a question around master's programs. So mm -hmm. someone is curious about what master's programs does Fort Lewis offer? So right now, I believe we offer two master's programs. There's a teacher leadership um, program and then a teacher uh, Licensure, yes, thank you. I'm getting help from, from the, the other audience here. So, so right now, the two master's programs that we provide or, or offer are both out of our teacher education program. Um, that could change in the future. Um, and there is discussion, there has been discussion. I mean, I've been here for 10 years and, and the, the discussion around um, graduate programs has been here the entire time that I've been here. But right now, those are the two that we offer. Uh, and I invite you to, to check out the website for more information. Another question. Uh, what about uh, on-campus jobs for students? So maybe a little bit of work study, stuff that's not work study. What about yeah. jobs? I have two, jo three <laughs> jobs? <laughs> I have three jobs on campus, and I love every single one of them. I work in the registrar's office. I work in the marketing and communications office. And then I work orientation. And I actually got a real job in the registrar's office because of my work study position. And so just getting that in there, I kind of grew into a real job. So this summer, when I was here for a month, I was working almost full time. Um, there's jobs everywhere on campus. Every single organization has a job for someone or needs a position for an intern or a student or even work study. I know admissions office takes people, registrar's office, health office. Every place I know housing will take people for jobs on campus. So um, I definitely would suggest just going around and asking uh, what places are hiring. I know there's an actually a uh, job um, Skyhawk Job Source? Yes, yeah, Sky, that's what it's called. Skyhawk Job Source is on your homepage. Um, and you just click on it and you can see what jobs are available. And that's actually how I found my job. So Yeah, and that's not just for campus jobs, but there's mm -hmm. also off campus jobs that are available yes. through the Skyhawk Job Source. Yeah. Um, like I said, I worked in the leadership for the past like year and a half. High five. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually led to a really cool internship that I'm going to start in the semester with SCP Student Union Productions. Woo. And um, <laughs> yeah, it, like go around campus, definitely get your work city contract in too. That's over at Human Resources in Burnt. Get that turned in. Um, <laughs> the most confusing place on campus to find. Oh gosh. The door is this big. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I mean, it opens up all kinds of opportunities. You grow more as a person every year that you work here on campus and you get to know a lot of the faculty and staff. So yeah. Um, I would say I was a chemistry TA um, my freshman year and my first semester sophomore year. Um, so if you're a science or even if you're not a science major, you can still do it. The only requirement is you take the lab before you TA for it. So you can take it your second semester of your freshman year and you actually learn a lot. You get to work with a professor. Um, you got like help in the back like of you know labs and stuff kind of it's really cool I learned a lot and um, yeah you get to like help other students it's really great yeah. when you meet so many professional staff it's I met uh, my second job with Lindsay in the marketing communication communications office off my first job and then Lindsay got me other jobs outside of campus like Iron Horse which is a huge thing in Durango all those things so just meeting those people it's a great experience. Yes. All right. Another question. Uh, someone is interested in a dual degree, so education and chemistry. Are they allowed to do that? Anybody double majoring here? You yeah. want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so I work with two different advisors here on campus, one from the business um, hall and then also from the psychology hall. And double majoring is a lot to take on at first, it seems like, but as long as you know, get to know the faculty, the staff, and your resources around campus, definitely like Psych Club helps out with a lot of the things that you do in class, and it like really puts your feet on the ground. And um, yeah, just keep working with them. It definitely takes longer than four years, so make sure that like you're taking equal credits for both courses and both degrees. And you never know, too. You might decide, oh, hey, I like this major a little bit more, so it might be like the second one might become your minor, or you might just go full force with both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll just uh, add on to that. So whenever you start talking about double majors, it's critical that you meet with advising and, and financial aid. If you're in the situation where you're receiving 
uh, federal aid or other types of loans or grants, um, there are sometimes limitations on the amount of money that can be given to you. And so if you're double majoring um, and actually you finish one major before the other one, there could be a situation where you would not receive federal financial aid for that second major. So make sure that you are really talking to advising and financial aid if you're in that situation with, with financial aid uh, to make sure that your academic career is smooth and on track. Another question. I'll also add along those lines, there is a difference between a double major and dual degree. So double major, you'll get one degree, dual degree, you're getting two degrees for those two different majors. So um, while Fort Lewis doesn't necessarily have strict stipulations on the dual degree, uh, I would encourage that individual to meet heavily with their academic advisor to make sure they plan that out and take the right classes that they need to so they complete those uh, degrees in a proper amount of time and save the most money as well. Um, the question that we have is someone is interested in medical school, do you offer that? Medical school. Businessman. <laughs> right. um, I know that we don't offer medical school. I know we have a um, public health class major. Mm -hmm. Not class major. It's a public health major. major. And we have the classes and all, all that. And that's pretty much kind of your prereqs into getting into med medical school. Just getting um, a lot of your bio and your anatomy and your chemistry and stuff out of the way. Yeah. So, But we do not have a um, medical Right, we med, med, medical programs, graduate programs is something we not offer. Um, but again, we have a lot of students who do identify a, as pre-med uh, in some fashion. And so it'd be important to talk again to an academic advisor about what kind of classes and courses and programs would set you up. I know personally we have a lot of students that are in not just the, the, uh, the public health, but also biology. Uh, we have a lot of students in biology who identify as heading into uh, medical school and other areas, but talk to, talk to uh, ac um, academic advising. All right. So we, we have about three minutes left. So um, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, in closing, I do want to um, uh, make sure and, and reiterate some things before you arrive in one week, the one week <laughs> countdown. Um, so first of all, again, please keep working on the pre-campus academy modules. Uh, right now, we've had about 40% of, of you complete those modules. We're shooting for 100%. Let's get everybody to complete those. You have one week to go, um, and we think you'll learn a lot of information before you even step on campus. We often get uh, questions about how can I stay um, notified in case of emergencies on campus? Uh, we do provide a service called Skyhawk Alert. This is something that anybody can sign up for. We do suggest, we urge that all students um, and family members sign up for Skyhawk Alert. It's a good way to know about any emergency or just campus notifications. So for example, you, wouldn't it be nice to know if we're having a snow day mm -hmm. and campus is closed? That's the best way to know is sign up for Skyhawk Alert. So you can go to the fortlewis.edu um, and go to the A to Z and look for Skyhawk Alert uh, there. Um, also, uh, just wanted to also talk again, one of the ways that you can really streamline your orientation process is to skip the SkyCard line. Um, you can submit your photo now, right now ahead of time, and we will have your sky card ready for you when you step on campus. And that will mean that you have one line that you don't have to stand in when you get here to check in for orientation. Uh, the sky card is your official ID. It is your key access for all the residence halls. It gets you into the Student Life Center. It gets you into the dining hall. So why not do that now? Take care of it, and it's one less thing that you have to worry about. And your picture will look good. And your picture will look good. That's right. So, um, all right. I just, oh, the other thing, housing wanted me to inform everyone that they still do have some single room options left. If you're interested in, in having a single room, please contact the housing office or stop by next week when you arrive on campus and they can provide you with more information. So 
In closing, we'd like to say once again, thank you to the four of you. You're awesome and wonderful as always. Uh, and thank you to all of those of you who have joined us this evening. Uh, we hope you've uh, really learned a lot. We appreciate your questions and we look forward to seeing you next Thursday, Friday, and maybe even Saturday for our orientation uh, and check-in program. Remember, this is being recorded, so if you do have other questions, you can type them into uh, Facebook or YouTube, and we will do our best uh, to respond. If your parents and families uh, are wanting to still come to orientation, we welcome everyone. Feel free to sign up uh, on our website. Just go to fortlewis.edu. There's a huge banner there. We took it over for orientation uh, and we'll ha be happy to uh, get you signed up for that. So with that, thanks for joining us. We wish you a great evening. Go Skyhawks and we'll Woo! see you next week. <laughs>